Hey, what's going on Flash Mob? It's your boy Flash back again with another video. And it's been about two months now since I've had the Komodo X. And to be honest with you, it's one hell of a beast of a camera. But with everything good, there has to be some bad. And today what we're gonna talk about is the five things I love and hate about the Komodo X. If you're thinking about getting this camera system, this is the video for you. Run the intro. Let's start off by talking about some of the things I absolutely love about the Komodo X. So the first thing is going to be its frame rates. So when I first got started, I shot a lot of slow motion content that was able to help push the story and the visuals of what I was doing. And with the Scarlet W and the OG Komodo, I was able to get 50 frames and 40 frames respectively at 5 and 6K. Now for the most part, you know, 40 to 50 frames, not so bad at full resolution. But on the Komodo X, I've been able to get up to 80K at 6K, which was absolutely amazing for someone like me who kind of had to give up slow motion altogether. But with this camera, I'm able to bring it back and not only just bring it back, but really push the camera's limits to really get what I wanted out of the camera. To be honest with you, I feel like I have zero limitations using this camera for any type of work as a DP, whether it's narrative, sports, documentary, whatever the case is, I can go all the way up to 80 frames without skipping a beat. The second thing I really love about the Komodo X is its modular design. As a DP, I get called out for a ton of different projects. And sometimes I need a steady cam, shoulder rig, freehand, tripod, slider, and the list really goes on and on and on. Having the ability to take this small camera body and build it out any which way I need to to get the job done is just absolutely amazing. And for whatever reason, if I don't have what's required to build out the camera, it's as easy as going online and purchasing the different attachments that I need to get the job done. You can pretty much go to any camera accessory company, find the parts that you want, build out your camera the way you need, and get right to work. And I love that. The third thing I really love about this camera is the IO port locations. Now this might seem insignificant, but ergonomics on a camera is a huge deal for me. So on a Komodo X, you pretty much need cables to do just about everything. Whether that be the audio, the monitor, maybe you want to connect a Teradek or something, or get Komodo control. Everything has its own wire. So having all the ports on one side of the camera where you can keep it tucked away nice and neatly makes a huge difference, especially when you're moving around handheld and you don't want those cords getting snagged on anything. Having all the IO ports on one side also helps with the efficiency. You know exactly where to go, you have easy access to the ports, and you can just plug it in the way that you need to get it done and move on to the next task. This becomes even more significant, especially on the Komodo cameras because they have that finicky SDI port and it's just something that you're gonna to have to be unplugging and plugging back in quite a few times on set. So having it right there on one side of the camera with easy access just makes your life that much easier. The fourth thing I really love about the Komodo X is them bringing back the mini V-mount. So this is something I had to go back and forth with to decide if I really loved it or not. On one hand, the BP batteries were great because you can buy a lot of them for a little bit of money and it gives you the ability to hot swap but they don't have that much capacity, which means you have to keep consistently swapping out the batteries. Where on the other hand, I now have these V-mount battery options where I can get up to 147 watt hours, which will basically run the camera for half the day. After shooting at the CNE, which for all my non-Canadian subscribers is an annual exhibition that happens here in Toronto, where you can ride rides, eat great food, and play a bunch of great games. I was able to run two 98 watt hour batteries for a full six hours without really having to turn off the camera to preserve power. With the OG Komodo, I may have had to bring about five or six different batteries just to keep the camera running the same amount of time, which isn't terrible, but you guys can get the drift. More batteries means more space in your bag, means more things that you have to keep track of. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about that I really love on the Komodo is its locking RF mount. Back in the day on DSMC2 cameras, that was like a standard thing on the camera. But for whatever reason, Red decided that they wanted to take out that locking mechanism on the OG Komodo. But on the Komodo X, they brought it back. What this basically does is it locks the lens to the camera. And if you have an adapter, it locks the adapter to the camera body. This results in having less camera shake from the lens to the body of the camera. One thing that the OG Komodo was notorious for was having play between the lens and the body. With the Komodo X, this is pretty much solved. Before we get into the five things I hate about the Komodo X, 
If you've watched this video so far, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you haven't subscribed yet and you wanna see more of the videos that I put out, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But let's get into the five things I hate. So number one by a country mile is the boot up time. I understand that this camera is a beast and there's a lot of things going on inside of the camera, but damn, this camera takes a long time to start up. And because you can no longer hot swap the batteries like on the OG Komodo, this is just something that you're gonna have to pay attention to and work into your workflow. The second thing I'm not so happy about is the overall price. Now, if we're comparing this camera to other cinema cameras on the market, the price is relatively okay. But at $10,000 for the body only for the average user, this is not a cheap camera. And on top of that, you're gonna to need to spend at least three to $5,000 on additional accessories to get this camera up and running. So things like a monitor, media, batteries, cage, matte box, you name it. All those kind of things start adding up. I always say though, that these prices matter a lot less when you have the type of clients to support this kind of camera purchase. But like Biggie said, if you ain't got the clientele, say hell no. They gon' want that money, rain, sleep, hell, snow. So number three on the list is their fragile SDI port. Now, if we're gonna be fair, SDI protocol is something that you should practice on every single camera that you use. Basically the SDI protocol is just when you remove the SDI port, when you're powering the camera and when you should be plugging it back in. But on the Komodo line for the red cameras, this is something that you need to really pay attention to because if you don't do it right enough times, there's a high possibility that you're gonna blow out your SDI port. And then when that happens, you gotta send your camera in to RED for repairs. And from what I heard, it's not covered under warranty. So it's basically just something you don't wanna do. So the right process that I've heard online and just in general is that you wanna turn on everything that requires power before you plug in the SDI to the cable. And when you're turning everything off on the camera, you wanna remove your SDI first and then power down everything else. So number four on the list is no internal DTAP option. So something that I really loved about the DSMC2 camera line is that they had the ability once you got the IO expander was to plug in accessories to the camera body. So what that means is it had a DTAP option on the body itself where you can plug in things like focus motors, monitors, whatever you want into the camera body itself and run it off the power of the V-mount. On the Komodo X's, for whatever reason, you don't have that option. Basically what you have to do is plug your battery on, Use the DTAP option on the battery itself to power any additional accessories. I mean, it's not terrible, but when you start having a monitor, let's say a focus unit, tear deck, whatever, right? You have all these different options that need power. If you only have one on your battery, it's hard for you to power all those accessories at the same time. It's not a huge problem, but if camera accessory manufacturers are listening to this video, we want something for the Komodo X that we can plug in some other DTAP options. And number five is limited video output options. Now this is a huge stress because the monitor that I use from Small HD gives me all the in and out video ports that I need. But it would be absolutely amazing for the body itself to have an additional SDI in or out port or maybe one HDMI port. This really becomes something that's important when you start adding additional monitors, like let's say you wanna run two monitors at the same time, or you wanna use a wireless video option that's going out to another monitor that's not attached to the camera. With limited ports, it makes it more difficult for you to add more monitors to your setup. The video output is just one of those things that I think RED could have just simply included and just make this camera body just that much better overall. But you guys can probably tell from now that I really love my Komodo X. The camera body is small, it's amazingly versatile, I love the ergonomics on the camera and its modularity. And of course, the most important thing is its image quality. This camera, in my humble opinion, is damn near perfect for just about anything that you wanna shoot as a DP. But what do you guys think? Have you had the opportunity to mess around with the Komodo X? Or is it something that you have on your wish list? Go ahead and leave something in the comments so that we can take this conversation further. If this video helped you out in any way or even provide you with a small dose of entertainment, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It's a simple click for you, but it makes a huge difference for this channel. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. That's gonna be it for this one though. Thanks so much for watching guys and remember to look, learn, and share. Take it easy guys. Peace.